Trade West was a game company that was founded in 86 and was merged into Williams Entertainment in 94. The Immortal John Hancock here with another ranking video. I'm having a lot of fun with these. I did a public poll to see which company I should do next and Trade West won. I'm gonna to continue to do that. What I'm doing is I'm taking games published by a game company and ranking them, giving you some info about a game and showing the physical cart. If you wanna see more, the link will be below. I've done several other ranking videos and I use this scoring guide. This scoring guide based on a 10 point scale to determine and give each game a grade. If you wanna do it yourself, the link will be below as well. Having a lot of fun. Here we go. If you're new to the channel, please hit that like and subscribe button and click the bell as I'm doing many videos a couple a week, both new and retro. And so first up is Battletoads. And so I like this game. Now I played it on the Nintendo first, and that's really important because the Nintendo version of this game was mind blowing. The Genesis version is good. It's a slight upgrade. I kind of wish that they did more with the graphics. The gameplay is just as tough as it was on the NES. I do like this game. I like myself some brawlers. I just don't think it has the impact that it did on the NES. The other thing too is there is a variation of this game that's very difficult to find. And here it is. This is Battletoads, the cardboard version for collectors out there. This is a very tough one to get. And so I'm gonna give this game a B. I have to say it's difficulty is gonna turn off some people because it's nearly impossible to get through, especially a two player game of that third level that, you know, everybody's gonna say, oh man, that third level, yes. I too have difficulty with that level. I would like to beat this game someday. And I'm gonna give it a B because I just think that that difficulty is gonna turn off some people, but it is still a good game. Next up is Battletoads and Double Dragon, the ultimate team and the ultimate game. And it's just a weird combination. It plays more like a Battletoads game. I do like this game. I like it just as much as the Battletoads game by itself. I do think that this is challenging as well. There's just a lot of little extras in it. And I, you know, for people wondering the differences between the Genesis and Super Nintendo, the Super Nintendo had better graphics. I think the Genesis uh, played slightly better. Also another game with a card cardboard variation. I showed the cardboard variation. Here's the, here's the other version of it. Uh, you know, for fans looking for an odd combination, a great two player game, look no further than Battletoads Double Dragon. And I'm gonna give this a B. That difficulty and kind of cheap hits is the reason why I didn't rank it higher. And so for some people, they may, they may score it higher, but for me, it's just a B. Next up, a uh, fan favorite of mine, RC Pro-Am on the NES. And people are wondering, what, there was a Genesis version? Yes, there was, and it is excellent. It actually is a slight upgrade from the NES version with uh, race records now, as well as enhanced music. And instead of three opponents, you have five that you race against. And I think it takes an amazing game and makes it just that much better. And that's Championship Pro-Am. This is a fun game. Now this is a game I didn't really grow up with. I don't even know if I rented it. I just remember playing this as a collector, probably in the early 2000s. And when I played it, I was like, oh my goodness, why didn't I play this earlier? There is a cardboard box variation of this. Here it is. This one is a significantly easier to get than the Battletoads one, but this is an excellent game. Everything from the original, you're gonna enjoy this version. The only downside of this game is it's single player. I'm gonna give it an A. I think it's an excellent game. I would have given it an S if it was a multiplayer game. Thought it'd be fun to show an unreleased game. And you're like, what? Unreleased game? And these are hard to rank because you always wonder, you know, they were unreleased for a reason. Well, uh, you know, Trade West was merged into Williams. So this game, Danny Sullivan's Indie Heat, is an arcade port. And there was a prototype dumped in 2011 and 50 copies were made. This is one of the 50 copies from that 2011 dump. On the forums, this was offered on Atari Age. Here's just the universal game case and the cart. And so this is a, a decent arcade port. Now, this arcade game was on several different things. Classic 16-bit computers, Atari ST, Amiga, and the Commodore 64, also on the NES. Now, how does this version stand up? It's pretty good. Now, if you're familiar with Ivan Stewart's Super Off-Road, you're gonna feel right at home. I think Super Off-Road is a better game. 
And this is essentially an indie car game where you're going around, you have to uh, manage doing pit stops, you do get upgrades. I think it's really challenging though. I, I just found myself just hitting that turbo till I ran out of turbo and then I finished third place. Now, playing the game more, uh, I think the control was a little bit loose, too loose for me. And so I'm gonna give this game a C. This next game, ooh, ooh. Double Dragon 5, The Shadow Falls. This is a bad Street Fighter 2 knockoff. It's actually based on the failed Double Dragon cartoon. And this is a really weird game. And so you're taking Billy and Jimmy and your uh, your team, you're, you're fighting several other opponents from the cartoon. This is a really mature themed cart fighting game based on the cartoon. And so uh, I don't think it plays well. I think it looked, the graphics are pretty decent, but then you see it move. I, I don't think it moves great. The control is bad. The opponents are cheap. I didn't have fun playing this, okay? When it comes down to it, overall the graphics look pretty decent. The sprites are fairly large on the screen, but I could think of several other fighters I'd rather play Eternal Champions, you know, Street Fighter II Championship, Super Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat. I mean, the list goes on and on. This game is bad. I'm gonna give it an F. I don't think it's great at all, and you should avoid it and play something else that's decent. Next is a children's style game that's trying to uh, be a game like Mario Paint. And it offers several other things, actually. It's called Fun and Games, and this was on the Super Nintendo as well. And what you have is you have a paint style program, a music style program, and some simple arcade games, as well as some of, uh, like a, a clothing match, as well as some other little mini activities. I don't think this works. I know it's for kids, but even if as a kid, I don't think I would play this now. Uh, it is compatible with the Sega Mouse as well. And so what do I think of this? Well, there's three actual games in this on top of the paint and music program, which you can't save what you do. That's a real bummer because I think that would have been uh, very impressive if they were able to do that. Unfortunately, you can't save what you do uh, in those. And so that kind of takes away the significant aspect of having those in this program. And so the three basic games, Mouse Maze, Space Laser, and Whack a Clown, I don't think are fun. Uh, of the three games, the Mouse Maze is like a Pac-Man style game. You have Space Laser, which I think if you took that engine or took that game and expanded upon it and made it like a Star Raider stock type game, I think it would be impressive. Unfortunately, it's not and it falls flat. I'm gonna give this overall a D. Next up is one of the worst football games for the Sega Genesis, and that's Pro Quarterback. What makes this bad? Everything. The graphics are bad, the controls are bad, it has fake teams, uh, and, and it wouldn't be such a big deal, but there were so many other awesome football games in which you could play actual teams. Why would you play this? 26 different teams. I think the gameplay falls incredibly short. Choppy animation. Uh, it's just a bare bones football game that's not that fun to play and overall does not match with the competition and other games on the library. This is a solid F. This next game is definitely uh, trying to be like a John Madden football game and is a much better football game than pro quarterback. With that being said, Troy Aikman football is just an average football game when compared to its competition. Very small sprites. You have lots of options in this game. You can play a season. You can make your own plays. There's battery save. It does have official football teams. All the football teams of the time are in this. Unfortunately, there's only one character in this game, and that, of course, is Troy Aikman. And so if you're a Cowboys fan, you may enjoy this more than others. It's not a bad football game. Uh, the sprites, again, are kind of small. Overall, I think it is a, a decent football game, but doesn't rise above its competition. And if I had a choice, I'm going to play a Madden or Tecmo Super Bowl above this. I'm going to give this a C. So that's it. That is my ranking of the seven release games Trade West did and the unreleased game Danny Sullivan's Into Heat. What did you think? Here are the rankings. And as always, thank you for coming to my channel and watching it. I'm having a lot of fun with these ranking videos. And what are yours? Comment below. 
what would you rate these? You can also do it yourself. The link will be below. And as always, thank you for watching my channel. If you like what you see, hit that like and subscribe button and click the bell as I'm uploading videos every week. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. Marching to 100,000 subs. This is the immortal John Hancock. Thank you for watching and you have a good day.